Welcome friends, let's look at another chapter on merchant banking. Now we are going to cover the, the basic concepts of merchant banking. We're going to look at the origin and history of merchant banking. We'll also look at how merchant banking originated in India as well as the functions and services provided by merchant banks. Now, what is merchant banking? Now, you may or may have not heard this term merchant banking. But in the States, this merchant banking, merchant bank, merchant bankers are used interchangeably with investment bankers. Now, there is no one specific definition of merchant banking because what a merchant bank does and the services that they provide you know it's it's a plethora of services and so one definition will not you know will not be able to encompass um, the whole gamut of what merchant banking is but according to SEBI now what is SEBI SEBI is Securities and Exchange Board of India a merchant banker is a corporate body which is engaged in the business of issue management, either by making arrangements regarding selling, buying, or subscribing to securities, or acting as a manager, consultant, advisor, or rendering corporate advis advisory service in relation to such issue management. We will look at this term issue management later on. And in general, merchant banking can be viewed as the operations that provide the support, knowledge, and so and resources to individuals and organizations for starting, improving, expanding, and sustaining their business and investments. Here, there's some more definition of, you know, uh, what a merchant bank is and who is a merchant banker. Uh, take a look at this. A bank that deals mostly in but is not limited to international finance, long-term loans for companies and underwriting. Merchant banks do not provide regular banking services to the general public. So merchant banks do not accept deposits or lend money, you know, like any other regular banking service. And who is a merchant banker? A merchant banker can be defined as an organization that acts as an intermediary, a middleman, between the issuers and the ultimate purchasers of securities in the primary security market. A merchant banker is an institution that helps companies to raise capital. It is an organization that underwrites corporate securities, provides advisory services to its clients. Now, let's look at the origin origin and the history of merchant banking. Now, the origin of merchant banking can be traced back to the period when people used to deposit the money and other valuables with grain merchants in the locality for safe custody before going on a trip. And after they, you know, are on returning from their trip, they would collect their valuables and belongings from the merchants from the grain merchants and initially there were no charges for us for the safekeeping of such valuables but with time with the passage of time with the passage of time they the merchants realized that the money deposited with them could be used for lending so that is what the you know so finally the the grain merchants realize that hey while these people are gone they keep the money with us what we will do is we'll use that money for lending it to someone else and in return we will earn some some uh, you know some profit okay we will charge them some money for uh, as interest for uh, borrowing that amount so and uh, some merchants even shared the interest income with the depositors. And uh, these, uh, you know, in turn, these grain merchants started becoming very important people. And they even financed kings, emperors, and uh, some governments. 
and kings used to borrow funds from merchants to fight wars. And some merchants were also requested by the lesser known merchants to guarantee the bills to be accepted by them. All right. So you see, so, so merchant bankers, you know, they 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 were involved in banking along with commercial activities of sale and purchase of commodities. And uh, so thus the term merchant bank stems from lending merchants who evolved into bankers when they had built up a sufficient reputation for soundness, reliability and the wealth needed to earn the trust of the people. Let's continue with the origin of merchant banking. Now merchant banking got a fillip with the industrial revolution in England. Now as industrial activities expanded, the business of merchant bankers grew at a brisk uh, pace. Even with the expansion of banking activities, merchant bankers continued both the banking and trading activities and spread the business all over the world. Now, some of the prominent merchant bankers during that time in England were the Baring Brothers, the Rothschild, Warburg, Blackstone, Goldman Sachs, and so on. And as the years passed, the original merchant bankers divested themselves of their traditional merchandising business and concentrated on providing financial services so see how it started from grain merchants who you know took the responsibility of safe guarding the valuables of of travelers how the grain merchants evolve into you know bankers and finally they become financial service providers and you know it is during this time again after the finance after the industrial revolution uh, many players started entering the field and the merchant banking business became more competitive. Now, if so in order to survive, you know, merchant bankers had to start diversifying into other businesses, which includes discounting of bills, managing issues of corporate securities, arranging finances for projects abroad, capital uh, restructuring, and so on. And, uh, you know, so, you know, so merchant bank bankers, you know, further diversified into new lines of services uh, related to mergers, takeovers, and even capital restructuring. Now, after the Second World War, industry activity picked up and development activities accelerated in many countries, including some underdeveloped countries. Now, this provided many opportunities for merchant banks to move into financial activities. They also started specializing in activities such as issue management, bill acceptance, trustee business, agency business, corporate restructuring, project management, corporate counseling. Another major development was when commercial and investment banks enter the merchant banking field. Okay, so so it is not just green merchants. Later on, you know, you know, other commercial investment banks they they saw that you know the opportunity in this merchant banking field, and so they also entered into it. And uh, they now they did this. These uh, in commercial investment banks did this by either annexing merchant banking activities to their traditional businesses or by undertaking co-merchant uh, banking services through their subsidiaries esta established exclusively for the purpose. So thus the role of merchant banks evolved when the leading merchant firms became heavily involved in advising as well as financing their clients. Now let's look at merchant banking in India. Now merchant banking st started in India in the 19th 
century with the establishment of agency houses of London based merchant banks. Now the the uh, a, the agency houses were primarily engaged in overseas trade and commerce, but they also provided financial services like uh, bill discounting. Now, uh, East India House was a popular agency house in India during this time. And uh, the managing agency system gave a big boost to merchant banking activities in India. Now, the entire Indian industry was virtually under the control of the managing agency system in the pre-independence period. So, this was before 1947. Now, a managing agency was a group of persons or a syndicate or a firm. They were, there were many agent, managing agencies in the pre-independence uh, period. They played the role of promoters and became pioneers. Uh, they were pioneers in the industrial the development. Managing agencies thus floated many companies, especially in the independence period. Now, as promoters of companies, managing agencies also took all the responsibilities and risk of business. So the absence of an investing class and organized capital market forced the managing agencies to be the suppliers of f industrial finance. Now the paucity of managerial talent in India also made the managing agencies take up the responsibility of managing the companies promoted by them. So you can see that you know the the this uh, the managing agency were becoming very uh, powerful and influential entities, all right? Because they were promoting, they were also managing, and they became responsible for managing the organizations promoted by them. Uh, uh, so so the under the managing agency system, these. Uh, there, were, there was concentration of economic power into the hands of a small number of uh, business houses or business firms. And, and, uh, and because they were becoming very powerful and influential, you know, there was rampant misuse of power by these managing agents, by the, you know, these, uh, the, by the managing agency system. Uh, so, you know, so much so that, you know, that, that finally, you know, there was uh, a demand, widespread demand for the abolition of the managing agency system. And eventually it was abolished in January 1972. After the Second World War in India, industrial activity picked up in India as well. Companies floated different kinds of securities to raise capital, which gave further fillip to the development of merchant banking. And in the post-independence period, the government of India established financial institutions such as the Industrial Corporation of India and the Industrial Development Bank of India to provide development finance to the industry now icici was also the established in 1955 with the support of some financial institutions and banks and the establishment of the life insurance corporation and unit trust of india gave a further boost to market uh, to capital market activity and all these institutions actively part participated in the promotion and development of the indian uh, industry. They took up many merchant banking activities, including underwriting of public issues. In fact, the development finance institutions became instrumental in the orderly development of the capital market in India. Now, merchant banking as a specialized business started in India with the establishment of the Merchant Banking Division of National and Greenlays Bank in 1969. The first national city bank also opened a management consultant division. 
in 1969 to take up merchant banking activities. But these units concentrated more on new issue management. Now, with these two foreign banks, when these two foreign banks made inroads into the traditional business of indigenous banks and broking firms, the nationalized commercial banks started exploring the possibility of entering into the merchant banking uh, business. And at the same time, the Banking Commission in 1972 examined the need for setting up merchant banking institutions and acceptance and discount houses. The Commission observed that the merchant banking institutions could help in the growth of the Indian economy. Accordingly, the Commission recommended establishing new institutions to offer various financial uh, services. Now, the recommendations of, uh, of the Commission came in handy for the commercial banks to enter the merchant banking business. So, the State Bank of India, which had, all, had already been providing underwriting services, opened its merchant banking division in 1972 to 1973 at its, uh, you know, between 1972 and 73 at its head office. Other commercial banks also took up merchant banking activities on the lines of the State Bank of India. So now you can see in India, you know, the, the nationalized banks also started, you know, uh, taking up merchant banking activities. Now, with the entry of commercial banks and financial institutions into the merchant banking business, the number of business or the number of public issues, particularly equity issues and the amount mobilized thereby significantly increased. And many merchant banking firms, they mushroomed during that period. And during, during 1971-72, there were only about 60 companies that had gone public. But in between 1985 to 1980, about 760 companies went public and most of these issues were oversubscribed many a time. Along with the increasing number of companies going public, many merchant banking firms mushroomed. Private firms including DSP Financial Consultants, 20th Century Finance Corporation and Credit Capital Finance, Finance Corporation also entered the merchant banking business. In the 1980s, the government initiatives of liberalization and deregulations resulted in a conducive environment for industrial growth. So funds, you know, so during this time, funds raised through capital markets, you know, uh, during uh, during the 1970s, were to the tune of about a hundred million rupees, okay, and uh, on an average per year. But in the 1980s, the amount raised was around fifty thousand million rupees on an average per year. So you can see that, you know. A lot of uh, you know public issues were taking place, and uh, organizations, corporations were raising money in the capital market, and uh, funds raised through capital market were increasing substantially, and all this reflects the increasing role of merchant banks in India. So you see, so merchant banks started becoming more and more important, and it was at this juncture that the government of India. Okay, established uh, the Securities and Exchange Board of India as a development and regulatory body for orderly growth and development of the securities market in the country. Now, let's look at the, you know, uh, the services that are provided by the merchant banks. And so now, so we are done with you know the origin of merchant banking and the history of, of merchant banking in India. Uh, let's look at the merchant banking services. Now merchant banks 
are providing a wide spectrum of financial and related services to the clientele and uh, you know and uh, there's so many many services uh, that the merchant banks are providing today we'll look at some of them in fact here we will look at 10 services number one is project counseling services corporate advisory services corporate restructuring services capital rich restructuring services credit syndication services issue management services portfolio management services private equity services mezzanine financing services and structured product services now let's look at each one starting with project counseling services now project counseling services involves extending technical advice to entrepreneurs and promoters on of businesses on various aspects of the projects right so uh, now a project has many stages different stages such as planning analyzing selection implementation and review and planning involves generating and screening of project ideas you know analysis consists of the market and demand analysis technical technical analysis and financial analysis project selection involves the consideration of risk and return aspects of the projects and uh, you know so these were some of the you know the aspects of of a, of, a, of a project and uh, and entrepreneurs and promoters of businesses needed some uh, type of counseling to help them you know to help them uh, you know find some expertise in conducting say let's say like feasibility studies and preparing project reports all right and also how to uh, implement the projects all right so so uh, these these were some of the you know the uh, the technical and uh, and expertise that merchant bank banks possess which they could provide to entrepreneurs and and promoters of businesses second one corporate advisory services now what is corporate advisory services now earlier business houses usually rely mostly in in-house advisory services now as competition intensifies in the economy and opportunities abounded they began to seek the services of experts and professionals so corporate advisory services are highly specialized in nature and offer real value addition to the clientele and merchant banks provide a wide variety of adv uh, of corporate advisory services to enable their clientele to do their businesses efficiently at their maximum potential through effective management of their resources so merchant banks would offer advisory services on issues such as diversification of products and product lines strengthening the existing product lines revival of sick units monitoring of rehabilitation schemes and takeover of sick units, location of plants, scale of operations, market surveys, demand forecasting, new product development, pricing of products, product diversification, brand management, logistics, competitive strategies, cost analysis, and cost reduction, raising of funds, allocation of resources, and legal formalities. All right. So, and 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 one thing you need to remember that in India you know uh, there are many businesses which are family owned and uh, such businesses are prone to disputes due to personal and professional differences among family members so they needed the you know they needed external and outside intervention into such things also and this is where merchant bank uh, come come in the next one corporate restructuring services Now, it, corporate restructuring refers to changes to be brought about in the operations or assets or ownership of a firm. The main aim of corporate restructuring is to maximize the value of the firm or shareholders' value. 
Now, corporate restructuring may take the form of mergers, acquisitions, takeovers, spin-offs, leverage buyouts, buyback of shares and capital restructuring. Now, the specific goal of re corporate restructuring may be to limit competition, eff effectively use underutilized resources, gain economies of scales, accelerate business growth, circumvent statutory regulations, reduce tax liabilities, and provide better customer service. And, and remember that, you know, the corporate restructuring is a long-term strategy to achieve the corporate goal. So it is not something for short term. Merchant Banks advises its clientele on various aspects of corporate restructuring. Next one. Capital Restructuring Services Merchant banks may formulate financial restructuring schemes and monitor the implementation of the schemes. Now, financial structure refers to the various means of financing the assets of the company or the organization. And uh, this is basically, you know, no nothing but looking at the capital structure of the firm. All right, defining and designing the capital structure of the firm. Whenever a firm wants to raise funds to finance its investment, it has to take a capital structure decision. A capital structure decision is evaluate in, evaluated in terms of its impact on the value of the firm. Merchant banks undertake the responsibility of designing the capital structure of the clientele. Credit syndication services. Now, sometimes it is it may not be possible for a single financial agency to satisfy the entire financial needs of a firm. In such cases, the firm's entire requirement of external funds may be met by a group of financing agencies, or uh, known as a syndicate. Now, the process of providing credit by a syndicate of credit institutions or agencies is known as credit syndication. Now, credit syndication involves estimating the total funds requirement of a firm, drawing a financial plan for the entire credit requirement, negotiating with the credit institutions, selecting the banks or financial agencies for participating in financing, preparing the application for financial assistance from the selected banks or financial agencies, following up on the loan application and obtaining the sanction of the proportionate share of funds from each participating institution and the completion of other formalities, including the legal documentation for drawing the amounts sanctioned. So you see, so merchant banks helps, you know, in all these various aspects, okay, it, you know, negotiating with credit institutions, selecting the appropriate bank or financial agencies, all right, following up on the loan applications and so on. So merchant banks identify then, then they assess the requirements, the funds requirement of the client firm to completing the formalities for the withdrawal of the sanction loan amount. So it's, you know, so they, they look into right from the process of, of, of uh, you know uh, estimating the total funds requirement till the time you know the uh, the the firm gets the loan next one is issue management services now merchant banks are also actively involved in man in management of public issues in order to meet their investment needs firms issue different kind of securities like equity shares preference shares, debentures, and bonds to raise funds from the primary market. The major activities in issue management are preparation of the action plan and the budget for the issue, preparation of the application to Securities and Exchange Board of India, drafting of the prospectus or offer document, selecting 
intermediaries like underwriters, brokers and bankers, obtaining approval from SEBI and other organizations, coordinating with all the intermediaries of the issue and placing of the issue. And please note that it is mandatory that every issue should have lead managers and the number of lead managers for an issue depends on the size of the issue. So merchant banks play a very significant role in issue management and as lead managers they assume almost the entire responsibility of the public issue. Next, portfolio management services. Now, what is portfolio management? It, it's nothing but, it, you know, it refers to management of investment portfolios for others by professionals in investment management. Now, investors may find it difficult to take the, you know, to take investment decisions when they do not have the adequate knowledge and the skills to buy or sell securities. Some investors may not have the may not find the time to constantly keep track of the developments in the capital market. Therefore, they cannot make wise uh, dis, you know, investment decisions on their own. And, and thus they need, you know, they need the help of, you know, of merchant bankers to help them manage their portfolio. And merchant banks offer solution to such problems of investors through portfolio management private equity services now private equity refers to an investment usually a very large investment made in a closely held company an unlisted company by a firm or a fund instituted by high net worth individual and institutional investors Private equity may also be understood as the large amounts of money raised directly from high net worth individuals and institutions pooled into a fund that invests in a range of business ventures. Thus, equity investment in a company that is not publicly traded is a private equity and a firm that trades in private equity is called a private equity equity firm and merchant banks helps in arranging private equity or they themselves they, they participate in private equity they provide companies you know they provide companies access to a great deal of capital very quickly next one is mezzanine financing services now, mezzanine financing is basically debt capital, but it is considered a hybrid of debt and, and equity because in this type of financing, the debt holder, that is the provider of the finance, is given the right to convert his debt into equity. If the debt is not repaid as per the terms of the loan agreement so mezzanine financing makes it easier for the borrowers to obtain further loans from other resources as mezzanine financing is treated like equity on a company's balance sheet the borrower will have further debt capacity to obtain standard banking financing but the borrower company should have a good track record so you see so so merchant banks you know helps in providing you know uh, mezzanine financing very quickly with with uh, little due diligence on the part of the lender so and it also provided on a you know on a second or even third mortgage basis that means there is no collateral for the debt so mezzanine financing you know can be given you know uh, you know quickly so you see, so merchant banks does help, you know, organizations to get, uh, you know, a second loan or a third loan, you know, very quickly.
Next one is, and the last one is structured products services. Now, structured products are a special kind of financial instrument designed to possess different combinations of risk return characteristics. These financial instruments are different from conventional securities such as equity share, debentures and bonds with respect to return and risk profiles and have embedded features of options, swaps, forwards or futures. Now, these options, swaps, forwards or futures, they are not known as financial derivatives. Okay, They are, you know, a hybrid, you know, financial instruments that are, that, uh, are provided in the capital market. Merchant banks play the role of designing the structured products and also marketing them. Now, and these structured products, remember that they are customized products. They are designed to suit the needs of specific objectives and risk profile of investors. So we have come to the end of merchant banking. I hope you have understood. By the way, uh, click on the link below in the description box and you will get, a, you'll get full access to this PPT. Thank you.